I know somebody asked about weight loss at 40 years or older, so that'll kind of go into that whole entire category. Does anybody else want to know about that too? Like, okay, so that's hot topic. <laughs> perfect. Okay, so we can actually let's just start with that. That'll be perfect. So like, before I go on around about it, what questions specifically do you have? What struggle do you have? What do you find is the biggest issue? Are there things that you've heard that you don't understand? Is it just a matter of like, I hit 40 and now there's a plateau and I don't know how to break through it? Everything's harder. Everything's harder. Yeah, everything's harder. I feel like just softer all over mm -hmm. of how much weight I'm lifting. So there's a couple things with this. Mm -hmm. One thing that like we can't avoid is the hormonal side of things, right? So for men, testosterone lowers every 10 years, like is when they have the kind of studies, it drops more. Um, muscle protein synthesis, so this is the rate that our body actually takes protein and utilizes it to build muscle, to recover, stuff like that. The rate that that happens lowers. So as you age, you actually need protein more. Um, it's not a huge scale where you have to eat tons of protein, but the need for it becomes more specific. You need it more frequently throughout the day. You need to break up your meals. You just need to be a little bit more specific. Um, the thyroid slows down quite a bit as we age. More commonly in women, but it happens in men too. The thyroid is a hormonal gland that controls everything. The way I kind of look at that in the central nervous system is like having a bunch of speakers and a subs in your car, but you have no amp. It's not running, right? The thyroid is kind of like that for your other hormones. If your thyroid is shot, your metabolism gets shot, your testosterone gets shot, cortisol gets shot, all these other hormones, in sex hormones specifically, start to decline. Those hormones affect your metabolism, which also slows down as we age. But one thing that we can control is the stress hormone, cortisol. As we age, we get more responsibilities, we have more joint pain, we probably have kids, we have a job, we have all these different things. Those things add to our stress kind of pile up. Um, so that's actually what the next slide was kind of about, is uh, training, nutrition, and recovery, and same with this, aesthetics, performance, and health. This is kind of like how I look at results and stress in one diagram. We all want all three. We wanna be healthy, we wanna be lean, and we want to perform really well. They're all kind of counterintuitive. Most of the time, we can't be shredded and perform really well and be really healthy. Like bodybuilders that look amazing, they're not the strongest guys in the world and they don't have the best hormonal profiles, right? The healthiest people in the world usually aren't jacked. The people that perform the hardest and are actually really good, like if we look at the CrossFit Games, even like Matt Frazier is not the most jacked guy there, but he crushes everybody. He's really smart about stress and recovery and actually eating enough food. So we kind of have to find this balance in those, and the problem with getting older is that we have more responsibilities, we have more stress that piles on. And what I call our stress capacity actually lowers. This is our ability to handle stress. I talk about this a lot because I think if we can learn to almost practice our stress capacity or like learn how to build it up with meditation, with going on walks, with eating enough food, with tracking our macros, with sleeping better, our ability to handle stress improves. So a lot of times, and this does relate to hormones, I promise, when I have people who have hormonal issues or are aging, that's what we attack. We don't necessarily do a ton of crazy stuff with their nutrition. We actually look at outside influences. This is a stress. Training is a hard stress, but it's a good stress. We want that stress. However, if we can't recover from it because we have a bunch of other stress in our life, it's not going to benefit us. So we kind of have to look at the stress paradigm as like everything is stress. So I, I talk about a shelf, right? We have our parasympathetic and our sympathetic. And I actually think I have a slide on this. So when I send it to you guys, you can kind of see like the actual specifics. But parasympathetic is our rest and digest. That's where our body actually calms down. We can slow down, recover, burn fat, so on and so forth, improve our joint health, reduce inflammation. Sympathetic is fight or flight. That's in caveman days, a saber-toothed tiger's chasing you, cortisol goes up, adrenaline goes up, you can run away. When we lift, same thing happens. Cortisol goes up, adrenaline goes up, we can lift, it's a good thing. However, if we don't bring that back down to parasympathetic, we're in trouble. So if we look at these shelves, we have our sympathetic and parasympathetic, our stress and our recovery. And I try to match up each shelf. And this is kind of the key to handling hormonal issues. There's a lot of different hormones and they all kind of relate or have issues because of stress, all different kinds of stress. So if we can look at these two shelves and try to balance them out, we can 
essentially accomplish more fat loss, more muscle gain, better performance. We're probably gonna be happier and less moody and we're gonna have healthier hormones. But it actually takes putting a lot on that parasympathetic shelf. So if we look at our stress selves, so if I look at my life, I think I run a business, I train really hard six days a week, I have a one-year-old that is not sleeping through the night, um, I'm planning a wedding, uh, uh, we have bills, like I just tore my meniscus and had surgery. There's a ton of stress that I can add on. Some of them are amazing. I love my daughter. It's amazing, but it's still stress, right? I think of my parasympathetic, and I'm like, well, I try to sleep six, seven hours a night, right? Like, oh, I try to go on walks. I try to meditate, but there's really not that much on there. There's not enough to match that, right? If we can match the stuff on the sympathetic shelf, all of a sudden our hormones improve, our recovery improves, what we do in the gym improves, our nutrition improves, our digestion improves, so the food we eat, we utilize better, and it just kind of trickles on. Does this make sense? It's kind of like a long-winded answer to the hormones, but I'll get people, I mean, the hormone crisis is a big deal. I think it's, they say two out of four women have thyroid dysfunction, and this is just what they know of inside of doctors, and, and I know tons of people who have never gotten their thyroid checked. So imagine how much it actually is, which is pretty crazy to think about. The amount of men that have low testosterone, it's insane, it's sad. But if we can handle this, it's a, it's a world of a difference. People come to me and I don't give them blood work. I don't do, I'm not a doctor. And if they want nutrition and they wanna go into a deficit and lose weight, before I do any of that, I'm like, hey, let's talk about sleep. Let's talk about recovery. Let's talk about all these things. If you do that, all of a sudden you start losing fat and you don't have to create a deficit, right? And this is me selling myself out of my job, by the way. I'm a nutritionist. I'm not a sleep guy coach or something, but this is the reality, this is truth. So I know that was kind of a long-winded answer about hormones, but we kind of have this hierarchy of that as well. Everything has a hierarchy. What do we attack first? It's recovery, it's stress, it's sleep. Then we can talk about eating enough food. Don't worry about macros or calories, just eat enough food, feel good. Chase like not being moody, chase not being irritable, chase sleeping through the night. Then we can talk macros, then we can talk calories, and it just adds up. Does that make sense? Um, and I have a lot of people that come to me, they give me blood work, they show me exact numbers, and we do use that sometimes. And we'll talk about supplements, um, natural ones like adaptogens, ashwagandha, and DIM, which is a uh, estrogen balancer, but they're all like plants and, and stuff like that. Um, but it comes so far down the line, right? Eating enough food, managing stress comes first. Um, it, that'll handle the whole entire st st hormone and aging paradigm. The hard part about aging is it does get harder to lose fat as you get older. Your metabolism slows down. But the metabolism is a hormone. Thyroid controls that. So see how there's like this trickle effect? And people will come to us, they work with us for six to months to 12 months a lot of times. Because I go, okay, we're gonna spend a month doing this, a month doing this, a month doing this, and then we'll lose fat. And it's a hard buy-in. They leave, they go try something, they come back, and they're like, okay, I'm ready, right? But a lot of that stuff, you can start working on now, right? And you can train harder in the gym because of it.